All right, what is up traders? What's up tycoons? Uh, super excited for today's video. As you guys know, we had hot CPI, uh, then we had our PPI report, but geopolitics took out the market. Uh, I thought this was a really funny meme right here. Uh, it's been a tough market, but you know there still are opportunities, right? And we'll go over some of the different opportunities. These are some of the uh, different things that we've been focused on in the Discord. Uh, we'll go over the gamma levels and why um, you know, we, we saw price action react the way it did, uh, gamma levels are something that I've been bringing up and trying to bring to you guys' attention a lot more. Okay. We'll take a look at the specific price action from Friday, and then we'll go over a bigger view, uh, on the four hour time frame for the S and P 500. Uh, and then we'll take a look at some good, uh, data. Okay. We've got some flows, All right, We've got some charts here about the VIX. Um, you know, we'll take a look at TLT, of course. Uh, TLT, I mean, you know, has really been great. I mean, as far as new trades, this is one of the only things that I, I've been getting a new trade in over the past couple of weeks, uh, many different trades. And those trades turned out very, very profitable uh, upon the hot CPI report, right? And we'll take a look at inflation itself, break down some different components. Uh, and then we've got some interesting data here that I want to show you guys. Uh, and it, I think it'll be really interesting, okay? Uh, so make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, okay? We're also going to talk about gold in today's video, uh, and then uh, we'll also talk about Amazon, what it is that I'm seeing on Amazon here as well. Uh, but as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only, and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So be sure to read through the full disclaimer. And if you're new to the channel, I actually started a completely free newsletter for you guys called Investment Intelligence. Uh, the most recent article was going over commodities. Uh, that was that DBC trade that you guys saw. Something that we've been paying attention to in the Discord. And I give out free valuable finance content. And I also try to sprinkle in some trade ideas in there. Um, you know, uh, publishing about one or two a week. And this is what they'll look like, right? We'll show you guys the chart, go over the conditions on the chart. And there is a website associated with it. So you don't have to um, sign up to get it, you know, in your uh, email inbox, you can actually just, you know, look at the website, basically like a blog, if you want to do that, however you want to do it. Uh, and you can also join the discord, okay, it's only 10 bucks a month, that's where you get full access to uh, all of my different, you know, analysis, uh, what stocks I'm looking at, different trade ideas, uh, and, and many other things like that, right? I mean, these are what some of the trade ideas will look like. You know, Tilray was uh, a recent one that we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that trade turned out very well, you know, talking about it when it was uh, right at 222. Uh, and then it ran up uh, much farther than that. All right. Valero was an energy play. Energy is something that I've been focused on a lot. Uh, you know, we're looking at Valero here when it was at 144 and the stock ended up running all the way up to the 180s. Uh, so really, really nice trade there on Valero. But let's get into it, okay? And let's talk about the market, okay? Geopolitics are a very big factor right now. Uh, one thing I do want to remind people of is that war historically has been good for the stock market, okay? So while war in general is not good, uh, and you know we're not looking to you know encourage war, we do want to remember that um, oftentimes it, it can spook the market initially, um, <clears throat> but the, you know historically it can result sometimes. Um, and, you know, increased earnings for companies and, and, you know, a better stock market, right? And so I'll go over some actual plays that you guys want to be paying attention to specifically. Uh, that video is going to come out probably within the next two to three videos. Uh, so subscribe so you guys don't miss that one, okay? Now, this is really what I've been focused on, energy, commodities. Um, and we actually just started some shorts in the market, um, you know, specifically in the retail sector. We'll see if that continues to work or not. Um, you know, energy is one of the biggest, you know, sectors, subsectors of commodities, uh, but precious metals have been firing off a lot lately here, too. Uh, there's many different aspects of commodities. We'll dive into, you know, gold and things like that a little bit later in the video. Uh, but the first thing I want to start off here with sharing with you guys is going to be this chart here. Uh, this is the gamma chart. This is one of the many valuable resources that are available to you guys inside of the Discord. Uh, you can get the gamma levels for a specific expiration date and for a specific stock uh, symbol, ticker symbol, uh, at any time you want in the Discord. And it's very easy to do so. And we see here that the put wall was 510. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to spend too much time going over call walls and put walls. Right. But these areas, they often act as magnets. OK. And, you know, when you're below the zero gamma level, right, the put wall is going to act 
like a magnet. When you're above the zero gamma level, the call wall can act like a magnet. This is where price is going to be drawn towards. And so when we see our price action, here we are the previous day. So this is Thursday trading above 517 and a half. And this is the level that I've mentioned to traders in the Discord, along with this blue line here, which is an anchored VWAP. You know, <clears throat> below here, you can look to target some shorts and then use this anchored VWAP or use 517 and a half, you know, kind of as your stop loss level, right? And look what happens. We gap down, but we gap down to about 515, 514. And we continue, continue to drop. And where do we drop to? 510 to the put wall, right? It acted as a magnet there, right? And, and this is where price action was drawn towards. Now, when we came down to this area, I did actually start scalping futures a little bit, right? I scalped a little bit of futures here, scalped a little bit of futures here, because I know that these call walls and these put walls, they also act as very strong levels of support and resistance, because that is where all of the option gamma is drawing price action towards. And once it's there, um, you know, it's going to take something really strong and really strong price action to really blow past those levels. Um, and so, yeah, what do we do? We come down to the put wall and that's where price action is gravitated towards. So, you know, these are things that you really want to monitor and maintain uh, and, and, you know, keep an eye on, right? It's really going to help you understand price action on an intraday basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, when you can understand these levels and realize, you know, where price action potentially can be drawn towards and why price action uh, is moving the way it's moving sometimes, right? You know, I mean, we had already a huge drop, you know, from basically almost 520, to about 515, 514, you know, that's a whole 1% right there. Uh, and we continue to go lower, right? A lot of people thinking we're going to bottom right here. Um, but, you know, that definitely was not the case. Now, when we zoom out on the SPY, all right, this is, you know, what I think I talked about in my last video on the S&P and, you know, kind of just showing you guys that 517 and a half level. We had this bullish channel here that we broke down and, and, and you know, we explained in the last video, it doesn't really get much more textbook than this. All right. What do I mean by that? Well, we broke down right here, right, with this large candlestick, right? We broke down, then we came up, retested the trend line here. And what did we do? We rejected it and we've headed lower. We have the anchored VWAP here, anchored to the all-time high candlestick. And you can see that we have not been able to close above this anchored VWAP, right? This candle right here, remember, this is a red bearish candle. So it opened here, but it closed below the anchor VWAP, right? And then this one here, it comes up, it closes at the anchor VWAP. And then the next few candles all close below that anchored VWAP. So you know, I think that if you're in shorts or you're someone who's looking to short, you know, this is something that you can use as a little bit of a trailing stop loss, right? Because once you start trading above the anchored VWAP, um, you know, that's going to let you know that, hey, the average buyer, the average seller or whatever, you know, it's going to tell you who's in control of the price action at that moment. Now, 510, again, being that put wall right there, you can also see it's a pretty, you know, important level, right? It was prior resistance, uh, top area of the channel, right? And each time we kind of came over here, we wicked down below it a few times, but we weren't really ever to, able to break through. If we break through this, SPY is going to be heading down to about 500, right? Roughly 500. There's a nice little gap here to fill. Uh, and that's what, you know, I think potentially could happen, right? If we end up flipping 510, to resistance from support and we start trading below here. And, you know, if you're looking for new money shorts, I wouldn't get overly aggressive in these areas or really just in this consolidation period here between 511, 510 and 517 and a half. What you would want to look for is a break retest, right? And this would give you a much better way to manage your risk reward ratio. Uh, and then, you know, you can possibly look to target that gap fill down here. Uh, this would be one of your first targets on the S&P 500. Now, when you take a look at weekly equity flows, and this is in billions, you've got the 12-week moving average here in yellow, and then the bars on the bar chart are going to be the flows. And what do we see? Well, we see negative fund flows here, right? And we see very aggressive negative fund flows. We haven't seen fund flows come out like this in almost a year, right? These are, um, you know, if you compare it, <clears throat> all right, and, you know, this is the lowest level right here. OK, uh, you know, we have a very aggressive outflow in equities, right? Basically, the second, you know, second or third largest uh, that we've seen in the past year, um, you know, into flows. Right. And the last time, 
that you know we saw the bottom here this was in september before the stock market bottoms right the stock market bottoms in october of 2023 and we continue to see um you know sell offs in the market so could this potentially be a sign of further pain in the market uh it's definitely something to consider and when you take a look at single stock options act activity that has declined and will likely embolden short sellers. Okay, this is from Goldman Sachs, their global investment research team. And, you know, they're essentially saying that retail investor activity has declined as evidenced by slower single stock options volumes. We expect this slower activity to embolden investors to short stocks. And this is something that I've noticed, too, not only through me personally, is I'm not really I haven't really been too active right in, in coming in here and doing tons and tons of options trades, um, you know, over the past, really just the past two weeks, uh, maybe even three weeks, uh, because it's just been a little bit tougher of a market, right? I've been trying to, you know, scalp some futures and day trade futures and things like that uh, in a couple trades, but, you know, my commodities trades, my energies trades, you know, I was in those for a while. And, you know, it's something I've been focused on for a while. So it wasn't like those were brand new positions. I was just riding the new uh, newfound momentum, uh, those were things that we were looking for, saying that they could, you know, potentially break out and have a big move. And I like this theory here. We're going to see if it comes to fruition about, uh, you know, slower single stock options volume. Does this mean that people are going to be more likely to start shorting stocks? Uh, now, this is a pretty interesting chart on the top. You've got the VIX spy ratio. OK, and then on the bottom, uh, you've got the spy itself and. You know, it's not the best chart, in my opinion. Uh, what I do like about it is it highlights, hey, every time you start to see little bottoms here uh, forming, you know, typically we start to see a decline in the S&P 500, um, you know, but then you also have these periods here, right, where, you know, it's really just moving sideways, right? And here it's just been moving sideways, right? And, you know, we've really just been kind of in a range and you could say that it's trying to break out now, Um you know, of course, the VIX, you know, went up like 20 something percent. So everyone's saying it's a massive breakout. But when you look at a longer term time horizon, you know, it's really just been moving sideways. So the VIX is really going to have to make a much larger move and a more sustained move um, to potentially cause one of these massive sell offs. Right. But that's what you see in these charts. Right. It's it's not a small move. Uh, these are very big and aggressive and dramatic moves. Right. Versus this little tiny move right here to the top of a consolidation zone. So uh, if you continue to see a very aggressive VIX, okay, rising rapidly, uh, then that could be further sign of potential downside in the stock market. So uh, volatility is definitely something you want to be paying attention to. Now, this is TLT here. Um, you know, the price action has been very clean, okay? And there were really just a few things that we're looking at um, you know, towards the beginning of April uh, when it came to TLT, right? We had downtrend here. We're starting to be aggressive and, you know, saying, hey, basically above this level, you can look for some longs, have this level as a stop loss and see if we can break out to the upside. There's lots of potential room to run if we were going to get a breakout to the upside. And then below 93.72, you wanted to be short, right? And what do we do? Well, we gap down there on this day. And lots of people will be scared to enter into a short position on these type of days. And the reason for that is because they're saying, oh, it's gapped down so much. Let me wait for a bounce to get in my short. But, you know, being that <clears throat> this has been a mostly bull market and we're still in a bull market, even though we're seeing some you know volatility these days, um, you know, you want to short into weakness. And so it's been, you know, pretty clear. It's like, hey, below 93.72, you know, we're going to look for some shorts. And uh, then below 92.20, you know, we're also looking for shorts coming down here, targeting 89.50 uh, or 89.42 to be precise. Uh, we got extremely close to there. Um, so I did just go ahead and close, you know, all of these up massively. Uh, and then eventually went to the next day after we gapped up, ended up getting stopped out of the remaining plays that I had. Because there's no reason to be greedy and let the profit slip away uh, just in case this thing starts reversing and, you know, taking off. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, if you're bullish on TLT or you think it can rebound, you really just want to see it consolidate between 92 and 89.50. OK, if it can consolidate here, build a little bit of a base. OK, basically something like what you saw here in February and mid late February or we started to build a base and then we broke above resistance and had a nice little run. That's essentially what you want to see here. 
If we break below 89.50, there's a gap down at 88 and there's a gap down at 85. Remember, historically, these gaps, they tend to fill about 90% of the time. Uh, the big question is when, right? And so, you know, yes, we do have gaps down, but there's tons of gaps up to fill, right? We've got a gap up here to fill, a gap up here to fill, gap up here to fill as well as even more uh, above $100. So, um, you know, the big question is when are some of these gaps going to fill? Not so much if, if people are truly seeking a flight to safety because of the geopolitical circumstances going on right now, then you would expect that treasury yields might actually start going down and bonds might actually start going up. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. All right. Now, a big reason that you saw TLT dropping so hard was because of the hot CPI report. And, you know, shelter is really the stubborn part, okay? And when you look at it, official shelter inflation is heading lower, but slowly, okay? And so this is shelter right here. You have the apartment list index, okay, in blue here. And then you've got the CPI rent of primary residence, and then you get the CPI owner's equivalent rent of res residences. And you can see these are starting to roll over, okay, but just not as aggressively, right? They're, they're being stubborn, and this is that whole sticky part of inflation that people are mentioning. You can see we had a very nice downtrend in inflation here, and, you know, it's really just been starting to uptick and flatten out ever since. And the part that is really troublesome or worrisome, rather, uh, is going to be this chart right here. And so this is the month over month annualized diffusion indexes. And essentially what we're looking at is, you know, the stuff under 0%. So this is everything CPI that's under 0%. And then you've got the over 4%. Okay, the weighted components, weighted share of CPI components. And this one is breaking out right now. Okay, I mean, if we were to just do, a, you know, a technical breakout, you know, it's breaking out right now. And this is not what you want to see, um, you know, the over 4%, uh, you know, category here uh, is the one that's breaking out. That's not really much of a good sign there. And, um, you know, it could be troublesome for the Fed, right, and make things really hard if this inflation trend continues right now. The next couple CPI reports are also going to be pretty important. I know everybody says that, but, um, you know, if inflation is really just starting to tick up, if commodities continue to rally, if energy continues to rally, um, then that's going to lead and spill over to higher inflation. I mean, that's literally higher inflation. It, they, like energy prices are higher. So gas, oil, commodities, you know, we're talking food, we're talking metals, different things like that. It's all going up in price. You're going to see that spill over and that's literally inflation we, we've been seeing right before us. Now, the S&P 500 is up 8.2% year to date in 2024 and the max peak to trough pullback has only been 2%. Your average year since 1980 pulls back 14.2%. I know panic is in the air after the CPI print, but let's put things in perspective here. And that's all he's trying to say, right? This is from Ryan Dietrich. Uh, Carson, they always have some really great charts and really great data. Uh, what we're looking at here in this chart, okay, this is the 50 simple moving average, right? Your 50 daily moving average. And what I want to point out is last time that we were testing this 50-day moving average, what we did was we broke through for about a 6% drop. So we're basically here right now at this moment where we're testing it, right? That's We closed just above the 50-day moving average. We see it dip back down below, got above, but it printed a lower high, right? It printed a high, then a lower high, and ultimately that peak led to about an 11% drop. That was the last time that we saw price action related to the 50 day moving average. And it's a possibility that I'm looking for where, hey, you know, we may, you know, do a little scoop and score where we, you know, kind of come underneath, scoop it, and then score back above the upside. But if we print a lower high there, um, you know, then in, in, in we start making drops higher than 5%, larger than 5%. Uh, it usually doesn't stop at 5%. Uh, typically, you get anywhere from an 8% to an 11% pullback if the S&P drops 5%. Uh, so that's something to consider here as well. Now, the SPX slid more than 1%. All right. Um, the index is rebounded after each of the prior days in 2024 when it sold off a minimum of 1%, averaging a gain of roughly 1% the following session. And this is something really interesting here. And so I did grab, um, you know, looking at a small speculative swing position and some spy calls at the very end of the day on Friday, 
um, you know, even with all of the news for a few reasons, right? Here's that 50 day moving average that we were talking about. And then we've got the Bollinger Band indicator here. And what I want to point out to you guys is, you know, once you start trading outside of the Bollinger Bands, you typically snap back inside, right? Trading outside of the Bollinger Bands, outside of the Bollinger Bands, snap back inside, outside of the Bollinger Bands, snap back inside. And look at where we're at now. Not only did we come below the Bollinger Band, but we also got uh, came to that 50-day moving average. So I think it's very possible we could see a little bit of a bounce. Uh, but as I mentioned before, as long as we're below that all-time high anchored VWAP, um, you know, sellers are going to be in control here at the moment. Uh, but this chart, I really like this one. I shared this one with the members in the Discord. And it just goes to show that you really can't count the bulls out. Every time there's been a 1% dip or something like that, um, you know, the bulls come in and they buy it up, right? Uh, and that's what we've seen. Um, you know, we've seen big call plays into the close today here as well. That was on Friday. Uh, you know, seeing big plays in Apple, big plays in NVIDIA, SPX, Amazon, um, you know, all call options right here, right? Pretty much all long plays right at the end of the day, just before close. Uh, now, since 2000, during the first half of April, stocks don't do much. Then as soon as you get past April 15th, the second half is usually strong. So this is late April seasonality, or this is just, you know, April seasonality in general for the whole month. Uh, since 2000, right? And so you see here the first half, not so great. And then literally once you get past the 15th, the 15th day of the month, uh, which is going to be Monday, and something really interesting about that is taxes, right? Everyone has to pay their taxes by April 15th. So when you think about it from that standpoint, and everyone always wants to talk about the tax loss harvesting that, you know, happens towards the end of the year, um, you know, then, you know, the first quarter of the year, you're having that moment where people are having to pay their taxes, right? And, you know, then that tax bill comes and it's higher than they want. And so they maybe aren't really investing as much as they would, maybe some of that cash rather than putting it into the stock market, they're using it to pay off uh, some of their funds, or maybe they're taking stocks that they have profits in. And, you know, they didn't sell them last year because they wanted to roll over the tax penalties, you know, to or the tax obligations to the next year. Now they're selling them now to pay off some of last year's taxes. And yeah, I just think that that's really interesting. So we'll see if this plays into effect. Um, I think I think taxes um, play a much bigger part in seasonality than people pay attention to. And it's something that, um, you know, I follow pretty closely. Now, gold loves uncertainty, okay? Uh, and so it's a little bit hard to see in this chart right here, uh, but this was a great tweet uh, from Brian G at Alpha Charts. And what we're looking at is the S&P 500 in blue and then gold and green here. And when we say gold loves uncertainty, well, the market doesn't, right? And so you see this period here where there's this chop that he's outlined and the S&P 500 is failing to make new all-time highs and it's just going sideways through the, uh, this period. Look at what gold's doing. Gold is absolutely raging, right? And same thing back over here. Um, you know, we're seeing the stock market going sideways here, uh, failing to really, you know, create a new uptrend. Uh, and what is gold doing? Absolutely going crazy, right? And then you see here, even during, you know, uh, most recently, the most recent example, gold going straight up uh, and the stock market going sideways. So uh, this is going to be another bullish catalyst for gold, right? And then from Sentiment Trader, when you take a look at their relative strength index surpassing a reading of 77, it's a scenario that's only been observed in just 3% of precedents since 1973. Instances above 77 have yielded a remarkable 17% annualized return for the precious metal. Um, you know, when we talk about commodities, when we talk about inflation and things like this, um, you know, the metals have been one of the leaders. Gold has been a leader. I've got a video coming out dedicated to gold, gold miners, silver miners, um, silver and, and, and different things like that. So look forward to that. That's coming out pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're looking at 17 percent annualized returns um, from here recently, right, even after this big run up. So, um, you know, there's no guarantee, you know, past performance doesn't indicate, you know, future performance. Uh, but, you know, when you look at the data and the stats, uh, those are really, really supportive. So if we take a look at gold here, uh, and this is just the GLD ETF, um, you know, I mean, this is a chart that we've been trading, right? It doesn't matter what the stock symbol is. 
um, this is what we've been looking at, right? We've been looking at big multi-year basis, okay? You know, breaking through overhead supply, breaking through resistance, breaking through all-time highs, uh, and just absolutely exploding afterwards, right? And, and this is a setup that you see in many different sectors of the market, many different areas of the market. And this is a pattern that you want to chase, right? That you want to have on your radar, set alerts for, and you want to buy these breakouts. And it's very easy to manage your risk here, and then, you know, you can set your targets, right? And if something's at all-time highs and there's no clear overhead resistance, uh, the FIBs and using the Fibonacci's is going to be a really good way uh, for you to, you know, get some type of price targets, get some price, some type of levels uh, for you to pay attention to or potentially take profit on. So, I mean, gold, GLD specifically can check back to 206, can check back to 195. It's not the end of the world to me. Um, but when we're talking about where it can go up above, you know, shorter term, you know, we have 222 and 230. Uh, those are going to be some of the next overhead targets that I'm paying attention to on gold. Uh, now, Amazon ended its song second longest streak of trading days without a new all time closing high. Uh, Amazon, you know, I played that one on earnings on its last earnings and it, it had a very impressive earnings report. Um, it's something that I still like a lot. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily in right here at, at all time highs. Uh, we did go over, you know, the setup in the discord for, um, you know, like a week or two before it broke out and made these all time highs and saying, Hey, you know, well, let's just take a look at the chart. Okay. Let's go back to the Amazon chart real quick. So, yeah, so back to Amazon, you know, we had this huge trend line here that we tested many, many times, right? We tested it about six times and we had this very small overhead supply here. And, you know, a lot of people would have, you know, probably grabbed the short position a little bit early here looking for the breakdown. Uh, but as I mentioned, it's a bull market. You went too short into weakness, not really short into strength. And we were looking for a MACD crossover on the daily time frame to really give us confirmation that we could head up. And, you know, I pointed out and said, hey, if we get this MACD crossover, it could be a sign that we're going to break through this overhead supply, head up to the 185 to 188 area. And we actually were able to push through there and finally print a new all time high for Amazon. And now, if the market is going to start selling off because of CPI or geopolitical things, uh, this trend line here is still intact, right? And this is going to be something we're going to be watching. Can it finally break uh, this massive uptrend, right? If you wanted to, you could draw, you know, another trend line in here, something like this, and say that we've got a giant rising wedge. Um, you know, I'm sure there's people doing that. So uh, I'll be paying close attention to this chart in particular here, seeing how we react, how Amazon fares. Uh, but that's going to wrap up today's video, okay? Uh, don't forget, you can join the Discord. Uh, that's where you get access to all the different analysis, uh, all the different trade ideas, as well as custom scripts, indicators, uh, and many other valuable resources, such as being able to pull up uh, dark pool levels, those gamma levels that we talked about, uh, and many other things. Uh, you can sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter is completely free. Discord's $10 a month. Uh, there's a website associated with the newsletter, so you can choose to you know look at the website, treat it like a blog. Uh, or if you want it sent directly to your inbox, uh, you can do that there as well. And if you ever want to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, um, <clears throat> you can come to my Ko-Fi page, click on the commissions tab, and in there you can book a 30-minute or a one-hour session. You also have this little buy a coffee button, basically a way to leave a tip or donation for the free valuable content I put out, such as the newsletter and such as the videos. Uh, and that's going to be it, okay? Appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next one.